So Webpack 4 was just released, promising speed improvements, configuration defaults, and some deprecations, and a new plugin API that will mean that plugin authors will have to update their code to the latest version. This video is to guide you through migrating a Webpack version 3 project to a Webpack version 4 project, including the ecosystem of plugins and loaders that the project depends on. As Webpack 4 was officially released on February 25th, only a week ago, some stuff is still in transition, and some deprecation warnings will still show, even though the project works. As things smooth out, this course will keep pace and keep you updated. So if you don't have the time and just want the working code for Webpack 4, I've done much of the work on the course materials at this GitHub repo, Webpack 4 Upgraded. There you'll find an exact copy of the course materials for Webpack 3, but I've done all the upgrading in the package JSON and the configuration files already. So just use the branches as you normally would. So without further ado, let's upgrade. We can upgrade Webpack 4 with one command. npm update webpack. All right, cool. We see that Webpack 4 comes down. And we've got a bunch of deprecation warnings. That's a good thing. And I forgot to mention that I'm going to be on branch hookup to sort of show what it's like to upgrade a branch a little bit into the course. Hookup is after the development section of the course. When we webpack v, we notice the CLI is moved to a separate package, so we need to install that as well. Cool. Now that's installed. It's still throwing all these warnings. Now these warnings basically all say, we're looking for webpack 3, you just installed 4, so we need to be upgraded. And the fastest way to upgrade your npm packages is by typing npm outdated. And this gives you a great table of everything that needs to be updated. Now all you have to do is run npm update. All right, great. Now we have a bunch of version numbers. Let's run npm outdated again. All right, comes back clean. Pretty cool. So let's get this running. We're going to npm run dev. Looks like it compiled successfully with a warning. The mode option has not been set. So mode is a new option in the Webpack config. You're going to want to set it to development for development environment and production for your production configs. So in this project, we only have a development config. So we're going to set mode. It's going to rerun. I don't see any deprecations. Oh, we have some deprecations at the top here. So this deprecation is going to stick around for a little while until the HTML Webpack plugin can catch up. But otherwise, it's pretty clean. If we go to our browser, we can see it's updated. Hot module reloading still works. Good stuff. All right, so that's basically it. In this particular branch, since we're using the HTML Webpack plugin, we don't have the file and extract loader. If you do have the file and extract loader, keep watching, because I'm going to show you the changes they made to the syntax of the loader. Otherwise, if you're in the development environment, you're good to go. All right, so let's comment out the HTML Webpack plugin for now. And we'll add our file and extract loaders. I'm going to say loader, file loader. Give it the same name options as we had before. And we'll get our extract loader. It has one new option. So public path. So don't forget our commas. The HTML loader does not require this option here. So we can remove that. Cool. So we've basically broke our blog. Because as you can see, there's no link tag or script tags. So let's add those to the index.html to finish this off. So now you notice what the extract loader's public path is doing. If I set it to this and let it reload, you can see it sets it to this. If I take it out totally, it gives the error, cannot read property output of undefined. So you want that defined. The HTML loader options are on by default for images. All right, to make sure we're aiming at the right image, let's give it a hash. 
And there it is. All right, cool. So it ties it all together. All we had to do was update the HTML loader and the extract loader. The named modules plugin is on by default in development. So we can remove that from all of our plugins. Mode development makes named modules work out of the box. So now let's talk about production. Let's check out Universal Components Final. All right, so Universal Components Final comes pretty late in the server-side rendering section, and there's a lot of different configurations and plugins that we're using on the production side, so I thought it would be a good example. So first thing first, we're using Webpack 3.11. So let's npm install Webpack 4, and we'll do it with the S flag to save it locally. All right, so we've updated to Webpack 4. Now we've got our familiar warnings here. Do an npm outdated. A lot of good stuff. Let's do an npm update. Cool, npm outdated again. We still got some stuff. So let's go through and see where it falls behind. npm run dev. Immediately it warns us about the common chunks plugin. All right, so let's open up our configs here. Got the dev server and dev client, prod server and prod client. All right. So it's going to want that mode, and this is going to be development. Put that in the other development. And then the mode production. I like to put it between entry and output. I don't know why. All right, still bad news about the Common Chunks plugin. It has to go. The name modules plugin's gone as well, and there's the Common Chunks plugin. Take that out. Let's keep on moving through these configs. The name modules gone. And finally, the last one, last Common Chunks plugin gone. All right, what do we got now? Still crashing. All right, so we've got an error on the Extract Text Webpack Plugin. So this error doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, some incompatibility between Webpack 4 and this version of the Extract Text Webpack Plugin, obviously. So the thing to do to fix that is to npm install save Extract Text Webpack Webpack Plugin next. And this will load the unreleased pre-release version of the Extract Text Webpack plugin. So now we have it on 4 beta 0. Cool. Let's run dev and see where we're at. All right, so npm outdated. Let's check these version numbers against what should be. So what we want with the file loader is 1.1.11. So let's go to our package JSON and put that in 1.1.11. Broadly wants 0 0.5.0. Chokidar, which we're not actually using, it also watches files much like Webpack does. I believe Webpack actually uses it as a dependency, but not explicitly. Uninstall Chokidar. Otherwise, you would just update to 2.2. And we sort of just move through it. So the HTML Webpack plugin, let's try 3.0.4. React Hot Loader should be 4. What else? Style Loader should be .20. URL loader is at 1.01. .01. Mild compile, we can just get rid of. It's no longer needed in Webpack 4, so that's a good thing. So let's npm install, save, and see if we've updated all our packages. All right, Webpack dev server needs a 3, 1, 0. All right, there's only one warning left, and it seems to be this AJV 
which I'm not sure what this is. It seems to be used by Webpack, HTML Webpack plugin. So let's install that right here so we don't have any more warnings. So npm outdated again. All right, so we're currently on something that's pre-release through, uh, through the next flag. So it seems like we're up to date. So let's npm run dev again. Cannot find module webpack mild compile. Awesome. So now let's go to express, take that out. So we don't need it anymore right here. All right, so that's saved. It's reloading. Let's see what happens next. Looks like it was compiled successfully. We have the server bundle and we have all the chunks, the main bundle, vendle bundle. All right, image, everything's good to go. So let's look at it in the browser. We have server side rendering. Very cool. We have all of our functionality working as it should. So let's see if we have some hot reloading here. We're going to go to the about component. I'm going to remove the heading, save it, and our heading's gone. I'm going to remove the image, save it. Let's put them back, save it. Nice. All right, so hot reloading works, basically updated. Not too bad at all. So yeah, the main thing with production is going to be the common chunks plugin. That has to go. Otherwise, everything in Webpack 4 is really the same as Webpack 3, and it looks like a lot of these packages are up to date now in their normal state, except for the Extract Text Webpack plugin. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this upgrade process. It's definitely a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So if you're not sure what the right version number is for the package you're trying to up upgrade, so you just go to GitHub, and you're going to want to search for like the HTML Webpack plugin. And so you see the HTML Webpack plugin. This is the official one here. So what you do is you go to releases. This release was done in July, so that's a little bit before Webpack 4. So that will tell you that this is not ready for Webpack 4 yet. So if you go to Jantamon HTML Webpack plugin, you'll see the latest official release is 2.29, but there's also this show seven newer tags. So there have been releases of version up to version 3.04, uh, which is what I installed. And if you click on that, you can see it was done three days ago. You can see the code tagged with 3.0.4. Now if you go to the package JSON, we want to see that this has a peer dependency of Webpack 4. So here we go. Webpack and it supports all of these versions. So that's where the NPM deprecation warning comes from. We want to look for the version number of a package that has 4.0 in it. And that's how you know that's the version to put in your package JSON. All right, so that's basically the upgrade guide. I didn't get too deep into the new features of Webpack, um, just the stuff to get you running and moving forward with the new version um, with the stuff we've done in the class. So until there's another update, uh, thanks for watching.